Baba Yaga. Far, far away in Russia, very long ago, there lived a couple who had one daughter. They lived in a log hut on the edge of a huge forest. She was a beauty, that girl. Marusha the Fair, they called her. Her skin was as white as milk, her lips as red as blood, and the hair on her head black and glossy as a crow's wing. And what's more, Marusha was as kind and good-natured as she was pretty. After a while, her mother died. Then what did Marusha's father do but marry again? A bad woman she was, the one that he married, and she soon grew to hate Marusha. One day, while the man was out working, the stepmother said to Marusha, I want to make a new spring dress for you, my dear, so you must go and borrow needles and thread from my sister, who lives in the forest. Well, the girl was willing, but she had to ask her stepmother which paths she should take. As soon as her stepmother had begun to tell her, poor Marusha grew pale, for what her stepmother was telling her sounded just like the way to Baba Yaga's hut. Now, as Marusha knew well, this Baba Yaga was the worst witch in all Russia. She had iron teeth, her legs were nothing but bare bones, and she rode through the air in a mortar which she drove along with the pestle. She lived in a very queer kind of hut, too, for it stood on chicken's legs, and whichever way you tried to come up to it, the hut would turn around and stare at you with its windows. What was poor Marusha to do? Her father was working far away, and she did not dare to disobey her stepmother. So she tried to be brave. After all, there might be a real aunt who lived in the forest, and if so, she would have been frightened about nothing. So, thinking she might have a long walk, Marusha packed up some food in a red handkerchief and set off. She walked and she walked through the thick, dark, beautiful forest, and then, much sooner than she had expected, she came to a clearing, and there she saw a hut. But what sort of a hut? <laughs> you may well ask. The hut stood on chicken's legs, just as she had feared, and it seemed to Marusha that as she came toward it, it turned round to stare at her with its windows. Poor Marusha! However, it did no good to feel frightened, for she was quite sure that the hut had seen her. So she tried to open the rickety gate in the fence. Oh! Oog! squeaked the gate. It sounded just as if opening hurt its hinges. Without thinking what she was doing, Marusha felt in her pocket, and there at the very bottom was a little bottle of oil. She poured some oil into each hinge and went through the gate. As soon as she got into the yard, she saw that a girl was standing there. She didn't look much older than Marusha. She was crying bitterly, and when Marusha asked her who she was, she said that she was Baba Yaga's servant, and that the old witch had just pinched her black and blue in one of her wicked tempers. As she was crying and telling Marusha all this, she was all the time trying to push the loose hair out of her eyes. Without thinking what she was doing, Marusha untied her little bundle, put what was left of the food she had brought into her apron pocket, and gave the nice red handkerchief to the poor little servant girl to tie around her head to keep the hair out of her eyes. The poor girl was so surprised at getting a present and kind words that she couldn't say thank you, but only made a little bob curtsy and smiled. On went Marusha, and just as she got to the door of the hut, a miserable thin dog bounced out at her from a kennel and began to bark his head off. Without thinking what she was doing, Marusha fished in her pocket and pulled out a piece of bread. She gave it to the dog, who ate it as if he hadn't had anything to eat for days. And now, at last, Marusha had to knock at the door of the hut. Come in, answered a grating voice. Marusha opened the door, and there, sure enough, she saw old Baba Yaga herself, iron teeth, bone legs, and all. She was sitting at a loom, weaving. As she wove, the loom made a noise. To clack, to clack, to clack. Good morning, Auntie, said Marusha in her sweet voice. 
Good morning, my dear, says horrid old bony legs. Stepmother has sent me to ask you for the loan of needles and thread to sew me a dress. I'll see what I can find, says the witch with a grin. Sit down at the loom and weave a little while I go and look. So the witch stood up and Marusha sat down. She began to work the loom, ter clack, ter clack, and then Baba Yaga hobbled outside on her bony legs. Baba Yaga wasn't thinking about needles and threads, oh no. <laughs> Marusha soon knew that when she heard what she said to the servant girl. Go and get sticks, light a fire, and heat the bath. Draw plenty of water and scrub my niece. Scrub her nice and clean. I'm going to eat her. But the servant girl didn't want to eat the bath, and she didn't want Marusha to be eaten, for Marusha had spoken kindly to her and given her a red handkerchief. Though she was afraid of the witch, she walked slowly, and as for getting on with making a good fire, she fetched only one stick at a time, and as for the bath water, well, she fetched that in a sieve. But Baba Yaga didn't notice this. She had begun to walk around the hut so as to listen and make sure that Marusha hadn't run away. Are you weaving, little niece? she called out. Yes, Auntie, I'm weaving. And weave she did so that the loom went ter clack, ter clack. Presently Marusha looked up from her work and saw that a, a thin cat was sitting in the corner of the hut. Without thinking what she was doing, Marusha put one hand into her pocket and picked out a little bit of bacon. She threw it over to the thin cat, which ate it up in a twinkling. Then the cat stretched her paws and began to lick herself, saying to Marusha, Little girl, if you take my advice, you'll try to get out of here. Just then Baba Yaga passed by the window. Are you weaving, little niece? Yes, Auntie, I'm weaving, answered Marusha again, and to clack, to clack went the loom. They listened for a moment till Baba Yaga's footsteps had gone on. Here's a comb for you and a towel, went on the cat softly. They aren't what you think. Try to get away, and if Baba Yaga chases you, throw the towel behind you. If she chases you again, throw down the comb. Thank you, cat, said Marusha. But how can I get out of here? If I stop weaving, she'll soon miss the to clack to clack. She'll know that the loom has stopped. I'll see to that, answered the cat. Let me come where you are. So Marusha stood up and the cat sat down. To clack, to clack, to clack, went the loom. If that thin cat wasn't much good at weaving, she was a grand one for muddling everything about. You can hardly imagine the mess she made with Baba Yaga's threads. Warp and woof, woof and warp, all tangled and crossed up. The worse the muddle got, the more the cat smiled. As for Marusha, she slipped quietly out through a door at the other side of the hut and went through the gate. Baba Yaga came back, and again she listened below the window. Are you weaving, little niece? Yes, Auntie, I'm weaving, answered the thin cat in a squeaky voice, trying to mimic Marusha. As it spoke, its claws were tangling every thread on the loom worse than ever. Soon old Baba Yaga came back into the hut. What was her fury when she saw that there was no Marusha weaving at the loom, only the thin cat making a dreadful mess? How dare you play me such a trick, shouted Baba Yaga to the cat in a rage. Long as I've served you, hissed the cat, you have never given me so much as a bone. But Marusha gave me bacon. Baba Yaga rushed out of the hut. There was the thin dog. Dog, why did you let her escape, shouted the witch. You should have barked and flown at her throat. Long as I've served you, growled the dog. You've never given me anything better than burnt black crust. 
But Marusha gave me a slice of white bread the very first time she saw me. Baba Yaga rushed on, and first she shouted at the servant girl, and then at the squeaky hinges. But the servant girl said to her, Long as I've served you, you've never given me so much as a rag. But Marusha gave me a red handkerchief the first time she ever saw me. When she got such answers, Baba Yaga flew into a worse rage than ever. She gnashed her iron teeth, jumped into her mortar, and gave a terrific push with the pestle. Away she went, flying along in pursuit of Marusha. Gnash, gnash went her iron teeth. Clatter, clatter went her pestle. But Marusha had been running as fast as she could, and by this time she had got quite a long way down the path which led through the forest. All the time as she went, she listened. Yes, something was coming. She could hear gnash, gnash, clatter, clatter. That must be Baba Yaga, thought Marusha to herself. I'd better do as the thin cat told me. So she threw down the towel. Almost before it touched the ground, the towel had become a wide river, a wide, brimming river, and Marusha was on one side, and Baba Yaga was on the other. The magic river was so wide that the old witch couldn't possibly cross it with one push of her pestle, so she had to come down to earth. Oh, how she gnashed her iron teeth with spite. However, Baba Yaga wasn't going to be beaten by a thin cat and a little girl. <laughs> she had a big barn full of oxen. She went quickly to it and drove all those oxen down to the river. They were so thirsty that as soon as they got there, they drank up every drop of water. Then Baba Yaga was able to make one hop of it, and like that, she and her mortar crossed over. All this time, Marusha had gone on running and was a lot farther away, but she wasn't far enough. Baba Yaga was soon able to catch her up. So fast did she travel in her mortar. When she saw how close the witch was, Marusha remembered the thin cat again and threw down the comb. Almost before it touched the ground, a huge new forest sprang up. The trees were much taller than the trees of the real forest, so tall and so close together that there was no way of getting through them or over them. But Baba Yaga set to work with her iron teeth and began to gnaw at the huge trees, but it was all in vain. However hard she worked, for one tree that she gnawed down, the magic forest grew two more. When she saw that, Baba Yaga knew that she was beaten at last and went back in disgust. Meanwhile, Marusha's father had come home to that. Where's Marusha? he asked the stepmother. Oh, I've just sent the child to her aunt's to borrow needles and thread. Just as she spoke, in rushed Marusha, quite out of breath, with her hair flying and her clothes all torn. When she saw her father, she threw herself sobbing into his arms. What's the matter with you, asked her father. Oh, father, father, sobbed Marusha. Stepmother sent me to auntie's to ask for needles and thread, but it was no auntie of mine. It was Baba Yaga. She meant to eat me. How's this? How's this? said the father, looking sternly over the girl's shoulder at the stepmother. With that, Marusha told her father the whole story about the hinges, the servant girl, the dog, and the thin cat. As she told the tale, the stepmother soon began to see that it was all up, and before Marusha had finished, she had slipped off and away into the forest. Whether she ever got to Baba Yaga's hut, or whether she was eaten by a bear, doesn't matter either to you or to me. What is certain is that not long afterwards, the little servant girl followed by the thin dog and the thin cat, came running down the forest path to Marusha's hut. Marusha and her father welcomed them, and neither they nor Marusha nor her father ever saw that bad stepmother or Baba Yaga again. It was all up, and before Marusha had finished, she had slipped off and away into the forest. Whether she ever got to Baba Yaga's hut, or whether she was eaten by a bear, doesn't matter either to you or to me. 
What is certain is that not long afterwards, the little servant girl, followed by the thin dog and the thin cat, came running down the forest path to Marusha's hut. Marusha and her father welcomed them, and neither they nor Marusha nor her father ever saw that bad stepmother or Baba Yaga again. <laughs>